Okie doke. Uh, well, I'm Herman Dial, architect and uh, designer. If there were one word to describe Herman, I would call him a visionary. He's been one or two steps in front of the rest of us designers in figuring out how to communicate in the physical realm, and he continues to do that today. I was growing up at a time when a lot was going on, a lot of a lot of change. Terrible things were going on too. I mean, my high school year was the year that Martin Luther King and um, uh, Robert Kennedy was was killed. It was also the year after the Summer of Love in San Francisco, and a year before the first man on the moon. So it was a lot going on, and I, and I was struck by what was going on in music, Beatles, Birds, Hendrix and just sort of bombarded with images. We've all heard a lot about design thinking, but really Herman is a thinking designer and designs when he thinks. And I've been lucky enough to watch him in that design process and how he rolls over an idea in his brain and looks at it from all sides before he commits it to paper. And that thoughtful approach is really what makes his visual artifacts stand out in the landscape. And so I understood him as an architect with a huge skill set and as a, as a designer who's interested in everything that he could possibly get his hands on. That, that sense of connection to the history of the disciplines at work and the visuals that come out of that. He is and remains really gifted at, at that task. And he has a very like late modern architectural origin story, but he's also kind of kind of a, a counterculture guy. I, you know, I, I guess I, I began um, early on from my earliest days in architecture school with this sort of intermingling of graphic design and popular culture imagery and architecture. And I've spent much of my career trying to sort through all of that and make sense out of all of that and try to develop a practice that, that somehow, you know, uh, connected the dots between those various things. He was, he's one of my favorite people that I've ever worked with. He brought the best out in me and other people. And it was really, really um, fun and interesting to go to work every day. His enthusiasm uh, for the different kinds of projects he brought into the studio. You know, it's just electric. My entire career can sort of be explained by my trying to understand and put together these four, <laughs> these four books. <laughs> it made a huge impact on me. I didn't know what graphic design was, but, uh, but here it is. And uh, Quentin Fiore and Marshall McLuhan. Here I was a, a, a kind of a kid from the, uh, middle class kid from the Houston suburbs, going to public school, uh, University of Texas, and I was suddenly in New York working alongside of other young architects who had been at Princeton and Harvard and Yale and, you know, was I going to, you know, could I measure up? Um, it took, you know, about three days before he realized, yeah, they're really, they're really smart, but I'm pretty smart too. <laughs> and, and that was a wonderful lesson. It was, it was uh, one of the most important lessons I've learned in my life. One Monday morning, I visited Herman in his office, and it was a particularly busy time in the studio. We were all working crazy hours, and I turned to look at the wall across from his desk, and he had painted it this neon pink color. It was just the right pink. Uh, and, I, and, it, and it came from uh, Louis Barragan, the, the Mexican architect. I appropriated that color, and it felt just right. People came in and were just 
thunderstruck that I would have a pink office. It didn't seem that weird to me. It's a beautiful color. It was this kind of delightful surprise that I think you can find in all of his work, whether it's his fine art or his design work. Her Herman's always the kind of person that goes beyond what's expected. He just goes beyond the limits of what a project parameter is. He just goes beyond, you know, how long somebody should be in this industry. And he's still an active designer. You could always find Herman by listening and trying to figure out where his laugh was coming from. I've learned a lot from him over the years. I've learned what it's like to be a leader and a creator and a teacher. I'm honored to call him my mentor and my friend.